Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. Uh, I hope you're doing fantastically wherever you are in the world on this rather chilly winter's morning. It feels like winter now. Uh, the Tuesday, the 30th of November, 2021. Uh, I'm a little bit um, tired this morning. I didn't get any proper sleep last night for some reason. Uh, whatever the <laughs> um, I, I have a uh, busy head sometimes and especially when I have lots of energy and um, and I, I had a, a really good day yesterday I was really uh, fired up and inspired by things and I couldn't stop thinking so I couldn't get to sleep but um, anyway uh, yes welcome welcome to your yoga solutions live um, I've had um, a question or two today I, I got one question f um, from someone on the on the group um sorry i can't remember your name um hang on let me see can i see it no i can't um uh, but it was about it just said knees <laughs> uh, so that's um that's a straightforward question i've got the idea um so i'll cover that and another one i got a, a video question from uh, ali up in scotland up in glasgow i, I think it's glasgow um yeah he, he he's He's been on one of my courses when I was uh, back in the day when um, you could do things in person without too much complication. And um, yes, he asked a question, a very pertinent question, um, about ribs and anxiety. Um, uh, and, and he said in his video, you know, I shared um, on the course and I share quite openly that... Um, uh, mental health and how mental health and yoga are kind of a good match how, how yoga can be um, used to to find to discover who you are you know your your actual self without the neurosis and stuff but um yes anyway he, he had a question about ribs because he noticed that uh, with anxiety comes some um what he experiences as tension in the rib cage and uh, he, he, he showed me some of the things that he was doing that helps and um, uh, it's great. It's basically, you know, yoga, <laughs> doing, doing some yoga, getting involved in your body in a kind of objective way where you're trying to make things nicer, kinder for your body um, is a good thing to do and will help. Um, but um, yeah, the specific question was what happens in the, uh, the, the feeling that he had in his ribs when, when there was anxiety going on. And it's a really good subject, and I'd like to cover that as well. Um, I think I can do both in half an hour. It's, it's a bit of a stretch, but I'll, I'll, um, I, I'm going to give it a go because I like to answer questions. So here we go. Uh, let me get myself a cup of, a little cup of tea first. Yeah. I, I don't feel so good when I, when I don't get sleep, but um, I'm quite amazed how practice can sort of bring energy and stuff enough for the day so here I am okay so first question knees um, so the problem with the problem no the problem when you have a problem with your knees or a knee um, what you feel is some distortion in the joint perhaps there's um, you know, some injury going on, some, some distortion of the meniscus or a pull on, a, on the ACL or whatever. That's the diagnosis. It's not the reason. Um, the, the, the reason for that is the way, uh, well, it, it's strain on the knee joint. The, 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 res, the, the result of giving the knee inappropriate work to do is that the, the, the muscles around it strain and if they get strong at that, then the muscles make your knee stiff. So um, uh, strengthening your knee is not really the, a long-term answer. It's a temporary fix that kind of leads to other issues. Um, a solution, and I want to dive straight into the solution because it's, it, it, um, it kind of uh, gives you the idea of, about how, how to think about yoga in the first place. And the solution has nothing to do with fixing the knee. The solution is in finding a relationship um, in, in the way you use your legs and the, and the way that your legs support you 
that doesn't cause distortion uh, and therefore a problem at the knee. So how, how do you do that? Um, well, we were doing something on, on the Saturday workshop last Saturday that made total, seemed to make total sense of it for everyone. And uh, the, what we actually started with was the arm uh, because it's easy to experience. So most people, when they use their arms, they think of the arm as this, this um, thing that either reaches out or pulls in, right? Um, <clears throat> when you're thinking about using your limbs, for support, you want them to extend. You want them to uh, not be overly bent because that's hard. That makes it too much hard work around the middle of the arm, the, the elbow joint, for example. Uh, so when you want your arms, uh, your limbs to extend in order to support you, it's even more imperative that you don't have to do it at the joint. You see what I mean? Because if, if you're putting effort into locking the arm and you put weight through that, uh, any kind of sudden distortion that that is a distortion of the elbow joint and any sudden effort um, can make it distort it's not the way to do it a simple way of understanding this that will do it will do so much good for your practice right is to think of the limbs when the limbs extend it's a two-way movement as in the elbow opening out is not something you do at the elbow the elbow opening out is a, is a movement in two directions where the forearm moves away from you and the shoulder moves back. Okay? And, it, and if, you can, um, if you can do that in space, and so you can do that by imagining that there's a solid surface in front of you, um, the feeling, when you do that, you'll feel that the elbow opens without much effort in the elbow, but the effort will be the shoulder, the core, you'll feel a response from the core. You might even find yourself holding your breath. You know, find your ribs working, your core working. And it's that relationship, that inward inner support mechanism that gives you the support that leaves your, your joint free. So, you know, try that a few times and see, see how the body responds. It's obvious with the shoulder because the shoulder moves a lot. Yeah? And you actually want shoulder to move back um, whilst you send the hand forwards and that is you opening your arm and the power of it is coming from the core and that, that if you use your arms that way handstand is is easy because <laughs> because uh, because yeah you're not having to carry your weight with your elbows same with the legs same with the knees so um, hard to do when you're standing because of habit most people sort of lock their knees but it, so so if you want to try it lying down on, on your side try and get involved with the same idea most people would straighten their legs by pulling the knee tight and it straightens the leg but it doesn't mean that that leg is fit for support right if you want to try the same thing the feeling of opening the leg isn't you straightening it the feeling of opening your leg is the foot moving away from you whilst the thigh, the pelvis, tries to move back behind the spine. And in order to do that, if you, if you do that, if you just engage with that two-way action, what you'll feel is the core kicks in. The core and the ribs kick in and you might find it hard to breathe, but it doesn't matter. Well, it's your breathing that will change eventually. But if you find that action, you know, you understand everything you need to do to be kind to your knees. If you add the effort of straightening the leg with the knee, then, you, then you'll um, be defeating the point. So if you can find that action, the opening of the knee is a two-directional action of thigh and core and pelvis and everything back away from it, as much as it is the foot moving away from you. Then you've got an idea of how to use your leg. So I'm rushing through this because I want to get onto Ali's question. Um, oh, let's uh, get, try standing. So same here. I'm going to do the other leg so, so it's matched. Um, start on the front of the foot because as soon as you're on your heel, you're, you're already extending the leg. So start on the front, front of the foot. And the idea of opening the leg is the same thing. 
it's the back of the knee. The, the knee opens, not because you put it straight, but because the heel, using the purchase of the front of the foot, the heel extends away from the knee, but the pelvis and the core gather up in the opposite direction. And you should find a res that the responses to that are the core, so your core gets involved, and your ribcage, your breathing gear. And if the leg can open in that two-directional fashion, you'll find all sorts of new efforts, but there should be virtually no effort around the knee. You can make it harder by doing a forward bend. Same thing, instead of just straightening the leg, that will make the knee vulnerable. You want the, the foot growing away from you, and as it grows away from you, you need the thigh, the core, the pelvis, everything else to gather into you, not to lift, not to lift, but to gather into you, so that you feel strong, strong and free in the knee, okay? So that's part one, that's question one answered. So uh, uh, whoever, whoever it was that left that question, please, Leave a comment, let me know if that worked for you. So now I'm going to get on to the, um, the, well, Ali's question about the ribs. And I'm going to try and calm down for it because uh, I was just trying to knock through a bit of yoga to sort the knee, knee thing out. <sighs> so, anxiety. Anxiety and the breath. Anxiety in the mind. Um, when we get stressed, when we get anxious, the, the breath is affected. We, and we, we develop a breathing pattern that kind of goes, goes with that anxiety. And the, and the breathing pattern is um, the body's attempt to kind of protect you. You know, some people curl in if they're they're in fear some people you know <laughs> um, lift up and open out in a sort of attempt to front it out I suppose um, we, we all have reactions to our environment and when, when we feel fearful or anxious those reactions kind of go with a breathing pan but um, it's a reflection of the anxiety now, um, Annie's question was about the ribs. He, he feels um, an immense um, kind of holding and tension around the uh, lower front ribs and sort of, in, uh, I'd imagine, around the solar plexus and uh, the, the upper belly muscles. Um, that's his experience. That... What, what's going on, Ali, uh, for you, um, from what I, what I saw in the video, by the way, um, uh, I can see in your body, you've, you've come on, <laughs> you've come on a long way in your practice. Good, well done, mate. That's uh, really nice to see after, after a couple of years or so, not seeing you. Fantastic. Um, what I'm seeing is that Although that feels like a restriction, um, it's actually the body doing something very sensible. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pause there for a second and, and just um, let that set, settle in as a possibility. We, we experience sensations and, and when, when, if it feels uncomfortable, um, we presume that there's something going wrong. A lot of it is to do with our relationship to that sensation. A lot of, a lot of it is to do with that, our relationship to that feeling. Because I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you a, an example of where that feeling might be useful. So say you're... Um, wanting to pick up a, 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 an incredibly heavy weight, right? If you were to do that without that going on, you would pull on your back, you would strain it, right? 
it's a perfectly natural core response to uh, my camera's threatening to fall over but I, I, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll wait until it does it's a perfectly natural core response to support when you need it and uh, there are plenty of people um, out there that I would recommend that they find that feeling and I'd get them to do um, Bastrika or something you know um, where you <laughs> where you pant the breath from that area from the ribs and the upper belly <laughs> but if someone was to do that whilst being tense so if the if the spine is trying to lift at the same time and that that's where your personal reaction to the sensation comes in so you know if you're if you're doing this thing <laughs> It's kind of uh, how the body would naturally, um, or one of the one of the ways the body would respond to a fear situation, for example. <laughs> you know, it, it's a way of the body getting you primed for action or or to support you if you're doing something extreme. You know, um, but if that person, um, if, if the body is allowed to do the thing entirely, <laughs> then there's no problem. What, what's happening is the person is coiling up uh, and getting strong. Um, but if that is going on and the person is trying to do something else, like lift themselves up, what they're causing is stress uh, because uh, the, 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 the other action that goes with it kind of makes it hard to breathe. And the, 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 the function of the, the breath that is meant to do the thing of protecting you and supporting you or whatever is kind of kiboshed by the additional tension of the lifting spine, for example. So, and, and, and then your experience of that feeling would be, it, well, that's just tension because it's not doing anything. It's not doing anything useful. I hope this is making some sort of sense. So, so there's the, re, uh, you know, the trigger for causing that feeling in you. It might be anxiety. Your relationship to it has become one where that's not a good thing. Okay. So your reaction to it will be to try and get away from it or for it to make it stop, which is fine, fine, fine. Um, it is perhaps an indication that there is anxiety. But in itself, there's nothing wrong with it. The, the, that action is actually a very useful thing. It's, the, it's core support that is related to the release of the breath. The effort of the ribs pulling together is probably only um, dysfunctional, unuseful, because of other tensions and the other tensions born of wanting to get away from the feeling. <laughs> so basically, you know, um, what I would suggest for you is to try and relax around it and let it do its thing. Let it, let it do its thing and see what it is actually doing. And, um, I, I, you know, uh, there, there are yoga teachers that would um, work hard to make that happen because it's called Uddiyana Bandha, <laughs> where the uh, Uddiyana Bandha means upward flying lock. And what's going on is the ribs are clamping down whilst the core is releasing up or moving up with the diaphragm uh, as you release the breath. The thing that makes that complicated is if the spine is stiff. So, and um, most of us yoga teachers, when we're doing Uddiyana Bandha, will be doing the upward flying lock. But in, the, in our thought, in our thinking, the upward flying bit would make us lift, defeats the object. So, uh, I know uh, yeah, it might not be particularly helpful, but pranayama would be. Pranayama would be, Ali. The, the body is incredibly intelligent and 
that thing that's going on for you, uh, and you found ways of relieving it, and basically what you're relieving is the anxiety by getting into your body and uh, you know, playing with your, your touch and, and other things, useful things. But the thing that's going to really deepen your practice, get you into a, um, a clearer relationship to what's going on, is to go with what the body's trying to do or, uh, in this occasion. I'm not saying this is true for everyone. Although I can't, in this moment, think of an example where it might be a problem. Um, but going with it, if when you feel that <coughs> holding, right, when you feel that holding, there's a sort of bracing around it, right? That feeling of bracing is because it's hard to breathe. If, on the other hand, you went with it, you would let go of any holding up tension and allow it to do what it's trying to do. It's trying to, the ribs are trying to come together and the diaphragm is trying to come up and it's trying to pull you down, probably, into a ball shape, I would suggest. So this, this would be, if I was with you uh, right now, this would probably be the position I'd get you in. Trying to be uh, kind of supportive in the arms. Um, a little bit, you know, that two-way action with the, with the limbs, so the shoulders need to hook back a bit as you rest up, as you kind of pull down through your thigh bones. And instead of trying to hold yourself up, let yourself get smaller and smaller, more and more hedgehoggy, okay? Whilst you go with the feeling with the breath and uh, bastrika, the, the, the rhythmic pumping of the breath from the, that area. And, what you, and, and when you get a pace going, where you're not kind of working it out still, what you'll experience is though the, the pump of that breath, the effort of those ribs and the core will be giving you a rhythmic sense of contact underneath you as you relax your spine. And if you think of that effort to gather in, to collect yourself towards the centre, which is a perfectly natural thing to do if you're feeling anxious, yeah, um, actually very good for the body it's actually very good for the organs very good for the core very good for your breathing responses and wonderful for your spine if your spine isn't busy fighting it by trying to hold yourself up yeah? if you can go, go with it you'll feel the power the strength of the rib cage and core working with the ground to support you and the kind of rhythmic pumping, the rhythmic effort of it, in between efforts to breathe out, there has to be a release of tension. So it'll be relax, relax. But you know, if you're doing it at that pace, it'll be too controlled. So whilst you're whilst you're pumping away, the thing I would suggest is try and settle your attention on relaxing certain areas um, shoulders won't be relaxed they'll they'll need to support you but the core the the core won't be relaxed because that'll be pumping away but what you do relax is your neck your back and your pelvic floor if you can relax your pelvic floor and your spine, the breath will fall into the body in between efforts with no effort on your part. It'll be something that automatically happens as you let go, as you, uh, in the moments in between pumps when you're letting go, you don't have time to think about it, but what you can do is relax your spine and your pelvic floor. You might even feel the kind of power, with the pelvic floor released, you might even feel the power of the breath kind of pumping through the ground to give you that sense of being sent away from the ground in the, in the face and head. You'll, you'll be pumping yourself up without any lift. 
the ribs at the back, uh, the, the reason I chose that position was um, the ribs at the back will have to relax um, for you to be able to find the balance of the thing. And those ribs at the back are kind of around the kidneys. Above the kidneys are the adrenal glands. And if you're relaxing the structure around the kidneys, one of the things that is touched by the relaxed um, arrival of the breath is the adrenal glands. So they, they, they get massaged, they get soothed, as opposed to the thing that happens when you are on an alert and in uh, uh, suffering anxiety, there'll be tension around the kidneys, quite, quite literally. Yeah? So when the, the body's trying to get you to do something, you see, if you let it do what it's trying to do and get out of its way and find its value, then you're moving from worrying about what the body's doing into understanding what it's saying to you. And the relationships of the sensation will change. It's actually a very important part of support for the upper body when you are upright. Not the holding. The, ho the holding is um, a complication. It's a response. It's a grounding response from the release of the breath in the rib cage, as in the ribs themselves ground. And because you've got activity in the core, the core, uh, the, the musculature around the organs, is involved in helping the, the weight, the fluid contents, to release back and up with the diaphragm. So it's the thing that makes you light. It's the thing that grounds the upper body and makes the lower body light. Okay? So, um, yeah. <laughs> quite, quite often when, when we have these things going on in our bodies, um, quite often it's the body, it, it's our thinking that needs to shift. And, um, I, you know, I, I like to presume that when the body is reacting to something and I'm experiencing difficulty because of it, I like to presume that this intelligent mechanism, because it is intelligent, is telling me something useful. There's something in it that is of value. And yes, yeah, uh, the, 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 when we get stuck with things, it's because we get to a place where we think that the body is doing something unnecessary, un unless unnecessarily complicated. And when we think that the body is giving us jip, it's not. It's, it's trying to give, it, most of the time, it's trying to give you a hint. Um, you know, it, it, if, if there's a problem in a joint and you, uh, uh, and you like, say your knees, and you um, do something that uh, is a problem for the knee. The body will fix the knee all of a sudden. It won't let you move, right? Because it's trying to protect you. But that doesn't mean that that's what you're supposed to do. It doesn't mean that, you're, that what you're supposed to do now is fix your knee and hold it in place. It's telling, it's, it's a natural response to the imbalance that your relationships uh, to earth and the space that you occupy and your weight and all the rest of it um, it's a natural re response to the complications in that, right? So it's not the body going wrong, it's the body trying to protect you from damage. Then you've got the job of working out how to not cause that damage in the first place. And, and I gave you that with the, at the beginning. The opening of the limb in two directions is the thing that takes out the problem in the middle of the joint, the central joint of the limb. When you feel these tensions, if you experience it as tension, then you're going to want to get away from it. <laughs> and it's not actually what the body's saying to you. It's trying to give you a clue as to what's meant to be going on. And I, and I remember, I remember um, your body, Ali, uh, from the course. And that's why I said, 
um, you've moved on. <laughs> That's what I saw. There was a change around the solar plexus that is really kind of good. It, it, it must, you must be feeling stronger these days, must, must be feeling more powerful. But um, that feeling, because of, its, uh, because of the interpretation of what it is and therefore how you deal with it, it, you deal with it fine. You know, you don't want the feeling, you do something that takes away the anxiety. Fantastic. But it's, it's kind of good that that's where anxiety manifests as, as a response. It's trying to give you inner support. It's trying to bring you back to your centre. And if you can shift your relationship to seeing it in that way and practice stuff that explores the feeling rather than tries to fix it, explores what it's trying to do, then you will learn an awful lot about the breath, about learning how to relax the spine, what's required. And you'll feel it directly. You know, after doing that, I feel great. <laughs> Uh, I had uh, on, on last weekend's um, uh, Zoom workshop, uh, I've got a, got a student that's been with me for a little while now, and um, she's had ongoing tightness in her ribs. And, and we did a lot of this stuff, actually. Um, and you'd think that working that area would give you more tension. But it doesn't. It loosens it up. It, it starts to become functional. You know, it's our relationship to it that makes us not want, uh, want, not want it to, to, to do anything. We want it to just stop. But it's trying to tell you something. The, 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 um, the woman whose ribs felt tight and contracted and held, um, it's just those ribs trying to get involved with the breath, <laughs> actually. The breath and support. But it's just one side, so it feels wrong, you know? And... But uh, in actually activating the rib cage's relationship to the ground and getting it to be allowed to move with the breath, it freed it up. Uh, another really common example is uh, the thoracic spine, the, round, the roundness of the upper back. Um, you'll be familiar with this, Ali, but um, a large proportion of people uh, in, including people that know about anatomy, f feel and think that the upper spine isn't supposed to move particularly. It's, supposed, it's just this rounded part that, you, that carries your weight. And, and if any of those people work with me, and I, I get them to work from the core and work in relationship to earth and space, and you know, uh, when they find that, what happens is that bit of spine starts to move. And... Those people that are not used to that movement will uh, quite often begin to feel that that is something going wrong with the spine because they can feel it. They can feel uh, things starting to move, uh, having not moved for 20 years or so. But it's a, but, and, and, a, and that relationship to that sensation will make them go back to hanging off it and not using it. But what the spine's trying to do is, it, is it's trying to awaken. It's trying to wake up. It wants to be at the centre of movement. And it hasn't been able to be that for, for 20 years or so. And when it starts, it's going, oh, God. You know, the person has a, the feeling that is unfamiliar that they didn't have before. And their relationship to it will keep putting them back to a place where it goes to sleep again, which means... Every time it wakes up, it will it will always it will keep being uncomfortable. The thing that will relieve that is when they start to really move from the spine, as opposed to use the peripheral body to hang off the thing and push the thing around. And uh, yeah, all sorts of interesting things there. So. I hope that was uh, of use to, to, uh, for both questions. Um, I've gone on a bit longer than usual. I did start a bit later, so I think it's not too bad. Um, yeah, that's about it from me this week. Um, nice to hear from you, Ali, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a bell in a bit. Um, see how you're doing. Uh, I, I've got a one-to-one -one this morning, so it might be later on. I'll, I'll, anyway, I'll, I'll text you and let you know. 
Um, and yeah, so that's about it from me. Um, I've got a, one of my Saturday workshops. Come and join me if you want to. If you found benefit in this, feel free to share it around Facebook whilst it's um, still on, on it. Um, I, I'll, I'll put it on the website for my premium members at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, share, share it around, share the love. And um, yeah, if you want to join me in person, uh, I still do my Saturday morning retreats. They're two, two and a half hours. Uh, deep exploration usually start very gently and build up into some sort of flow and I always theme it based on the needs of the participants and uh, the reason I do that is because it makes for really good content you know because uh, it makes for content that's entirely relevant to each person there and um, you know, as opposed to me off you know imposing my agenda so um, yeah, uh, that can be on Saturday, ten thirty till one. Uh, you can you can book a lot of place, or if if you want to save some, save some cash, yeah, it's half price if you do view only. It also means uh, I won't interact with you because I, I won't be able to see you on the screen. Um, but you know, some people prefer that. Even, so that's fine. Okay, so uh, that's all from me um, until the same time. Been Mark J. Aquaviva. This was your Yoga Solutions Live. I hope you enjoyed it. Much love to you all. Bye now.